My name is James Claycomb, and today I'll be talking about non-destructive testing simulations. Using QuickField, and I'm with the Department of Mathematics and Physics at uh, Houston Bast Baptist University, and also at University of Houston Texas Center for Superconductivity. So some of the NDT topics that I'll be talking about today, we'll be looking at eddy current NDT simulations, principles of eddy current NDT, circular and planar drive coils, simulations varying frequency, flaw depth, liftoff, etc., uh, pulsed eddy current inspection, calculating the flaw response from the unperturbed eddy current density using the Biosavar law. The next section will include permeability mapping. We map magnetic field perturbation near defects in magnetic materials, and also investigating the stress distribution near cracks, under loading, and also thermal expansion. So the first part of my presentation, I will give an a, a overview of the models that I'll be discussing, and in the second part, we'll be looking at the quick field simulations. So some of the principles of eddy current non-destructive testing. Essentially, we have an AC excitation coil that induces eddy currents in a nearby object under inspection here. And I've drawn a little schematic. This is a uh, circular excitation coil, and the AC magnetic field is denoted by the, the red lines here. And then the current induced in the sample is denoted by the green line. And this is supposed to represent the perturbation of eddy current by flaw. And Usually we'll have a, a drive coil and also a secondary coil to pick up the flaw response. Alternatively, we can monitor the change in magnetic field due to flaws by using a magnetic sensor such as a Hall probe, a fluxgate magnetometer, or a squid magnetometer. So this is a representative geometry similar to how we'll be simulating it in quick field. This shows a circular drive coil above a semi-infinite conducting half plane. And this region is the air region, and this is the conducting region. And this would be the coil where you imagine that it's rotated about the z-axis here. So this is an example of RZ symmetry. So many of the models that we'll be simulating will have this RZ symmetry so that you can imagine they're laying sideways here with uh, rotated about the z-axis, which is horizontal. As an example of one of the models we'll be looking at, uh, it will be a, a rivet that's bonding two conductors together with a corrosion pit on the second layer, where this here represents the, uh, the drive coil. In this case, would be a single filamentary current above the rivet. And once again, this is the z-axis. And we'll be performing these simulations in AC magnetics, where we calculate the eddy current dis distribution. Uh, they can also be performed in, in transient magnetics as well. This is an example of a pipe inspection that we'll be looking at, uh, where we have a pair of coils, um, a primary and a secondary coil here. They're actually counterwound. And the pipe here, you can imagine, rotated about the the z-axis contains a notched defect on the on the inner surface, and so we will use labor mover feature to scan the pipe underneath the coils, which is identical to scanning the coils over the pipe mathematically. And this is an example of a, a type of simulation where we're using an x-y symmetry, where we have uh, instead of a radial symmetry where we rotate about the z-axis, we have a planar symmetry. So this is the y direction is vertical and the x direction is horizontal. And in this type of model, we'll be looking at a sheet inducer, which is a, a planar eddy current inducer. So the current is essentially coming out of the board towards you. 
and then any conductors, any flaws in the conductor will deviate the eddy current, and especially at the central region here, that will give rise to a Y component magnetic field uh, if there are any defects in the material here. So we'll be looking at this. But I want to talk a little bit about calculating the flaw response from the unperturbed eddy current density. Uh, quick field is a two-dimensional code that models RZ or XY symmetry, and you can calculate the unperturbed eddy current density uh, for any type of axisymmetric or planar symmetric probe. Uh, however, the presence of a defect will, in general, break the axial or XY symmetry. Um, for example, here I've drawn a, a uniform current flow with a, um, a flaw, and to first approximation, the, the flaw current is zero within the volume of the defect. Uh, and we can, uh, we can model this um, if we consider the flaw current to be a superposition of a uniform current density and a uniformly directed current dipole that's, op that's pointing in the opposite direction. So if I add these two current densities together, I'll attain to first approximation the actual current density with the flaw present. Um, this analysis it neglects the flow of eddy current around the, the edges of the defect. And this is an AC current flow simulation conducted in quick field that uh, here's a, a flaw with zero conductivity, and this is done in uh, AC current module within quick field. And the flaw current uh, is navigating around the defect here with lower current density near the center of the defect and a higher current density, uh, almost an order of magnitude greater, near the edges of the flaw. Now, this current density can be uh, more accurately represented as a current dipole that's opposing the direction of the current, as well as a magnetic dipole component around the edges of the dipole. It turns out that the current dipole components will attenuate, the magnetic field will attenuate as 1 over r squared, where there's the magnetic field of the, uh, the circular bits here at the edges, those components attenuate as 1 over r cubed. So that the current dipole approximation is working actually for smaller flaws here where uh, obviously if this was a very huge long flaw, then this the approximating as a current dipole would be less accurate. Now, if we approximate the flaw current as, the, as minus the unperturbed eddy current density within the volume of a flaw, we can therefore calculate the magnetic field due to the flaw current uh, from the Biot-Savart law, where the R prime coordinate is taken over the, the volume over the, of the flaw. Now, for small flaws where the unperturbed eddy current density does not vary appreciably over the volume of the flaw, we can approximate this integral with simply the volume of the flaw. So we multiply the unperturbed eddy current density times the volume of the flaw times the geometrical factor will give us the change in magnetic field. Now, if we want to look at the, the voltage change in a pickup coil, we can also use the same model where we calculate the, the change in vector potential is simply the unperturbed eddy current density uh, divided by the sensor flaw separation times the volume of the flaw. And since the electric field is minus dA dt, we can write in AC magnetics I omega times the integral of uh, the delta A around the, the circular cross-section of the flaw. In addition to eddy current simulations, we can also look at permeability mapping, where instead of AC magnetics, we're using magnetostatic simulations. And this is um, a simulation that we'll be looking at in planar XY symmetry, where we have a, a steel bar with a flaw and a magnetizing coil with a central magnetometer. And as this is scanned over the flaw, we can measure the 
flaw response at the magnetometer. And I'll just show you the field distribution of this. We can use the label mover feature to scan. Also, using a similar type of setup with a sharp ferrite tip. Now, in general, our signal, our spatial resolution is limited by the size of our sensor. So if we have a pickup coil with a one centimeter diameter, that's roughly going to be what our spatial resolution is. However, if we use a ferrite tip that's sharp at one end and our sensor is located at the top of the tip, this will essentially channel, the ferrite essentially channels the magnetic flux through it and we can use this to improve our spatial resolution. Similar to a, a magnetic uh, AFM probe. However, this is much larger than an AFM probe. Now, also, a lot of the examples we're looking at, you can find um, in the textbook Applied Electromagnetics Using Quick Field and MATLAB. Uh, for example, the time harmonic magnetics and also transient magnetics. Flaws can be simulated in DC current flow, AC current flow. Um, and then the results of those can be used in the Biosavar law to calculate the flaw response. And finally, I'll, I'll end the simulations with an example with stress analysis where we're looking at the stress distribution near flaws. So I'll go ahead 